Okay, yeah, so you're given a differential equation. This is question 8. Um, a differential equation with the initial condition. So this is actually an initial value problem. You're told to solve this. You should, you should expect to obtain a particular solution, not a general solution now for your solution. Now, how then do you go about solving, solving this? Um, looking at this, it has a form of the equation we solved earlier. So most times, whenever I advise students, whenever they, whenever they have a differential equation expressed in this format, it might be an exact equation. So I start by checking if it, if it is actually an exact equation. So to check if it's an exact equation, I'm going to compare it with m dx plus n n dy equals zero. So we have the m here and the n here. They are functions of um, x and y. So for this Generally now for this to be an exact equation the criterion which it must satisfy is the m dx or the m dy must equal the partial derivative of n with respect to x So comparing the two of them that is this my general and The one I'm giving so we would observe that m equals m equals e to the power x plus y so while my n equals 2 plus x plus y e to the power y so to find my partial derivative of m with respect to y this is a constant that goes to 0 so the m dy is going to give me 1 then the partial derivative of n with respect to x would also give me 1 so since the m dy equals 1 equals the n dx, so this implies that this is an exact equation. So let me just call this, let me call this star. So we call this equation star. So from what we observe here, it implies that star is an exact equation. Star is an exact equation. So since it's an exact equation, it simply implies that the left-hand side must be an exact differential. So like we solved in the earlier problem, so this is going to be the differential of a function. So we have the f, the x, the x, plus the f, the y, the y. So what we have here, comparing the two of them, so we have this as the f, del x must be equal to e to the power x plus y and so we could call this one and del f del y should be equal to 2 plus x plus y exponential y so you can call that equation 2 so now from equation 1 okay this time around I could I could use I could use any of them I could use one, I could use two to find my f. So let, let's let's start with two anyway. So starting with two to find f. So we have f to be the integral of two plus x plus y exponential y. So this time around I'm integrating with respect to y. So I'm treating all terms in x as a constant. So to do that what we have is 2y so we are integrating our respect to y we have 2y plus this is 2y plus um, xy yeah that's x y then plus the integral of y exponential y dy so to integrate this we have to use integration by part and which is actually so you have um, you have f equals I have to write this here you have 2y plus xy then plus so you have y integral of exponential y dy minus the integral of exponential y dy so this is 2y plus xy then plus y exponential y minus exponential y plus 
our arbitrary constant. So since we are treating x as a constant, so let's just call that g of x. If you have used h of x, it doesn't really matter. So this is our f. And then for this our function of x to make sense, it must tally with what we have in what we have in one. So we start with two, so we are moving to one now. So to check if it tallies with um for you to tally with uh, x, so we'll take the partial derivative of f with respect to x, this goes to zero. With respect to x, this becomes y. With respect to x, this goes to zero, this goes to zero, then plus g prime of x plus g prime of x. That's what we're getting, plus g prime of x. Now, this must be equal to what we have here. That is, what we have here is e to the power x plus y. So, there is a y here, there is a y here. So, but there is g prime of x here, and there is e to the power x here. So, for you to tally, it implies that g prime of x must be equal to e to the power x. So, therefore, to find g of x, we should integrate e to the power x with respect to x. And that is going to give us e to the power x. So, we've been able to find our g of x to be e to the power x. So, I have already gotten something for my f here. So, the complete solution here should be f equals 2y plus xy plus y exponential y minus exponential y itself and plus g of x. The g of x is e to the power x. e to the power x. But then we're given an initial condition that says, now this is the general, um, so the general solution, this is the function we got. So the general solution is going to be f of x, y equals c. That is 2y plus x, y plus y exponential y minus e to the power y plus e to the power x equals c. So this 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 that you have here is is actually the general solution of of the differential equation here. So to find a particular solution satisfying this initial condition, it says when x is zero, y is one. When x is zero, y is one. So wherever we have y, we're gonna put one. So this is two times one, that is two. So x is 0, 0 times this, that's 0. So plus, then y, y is 1. 1 times e to the power 1 minus e to the power 1, that is e. Then plus e to the power 0, which is 1. So that equals c. So this goes off. So this implies that c equals 3. So I've gotten a value for c. So therefore, the general, the particular solution now will now be 2y plus xy plus y exponential y minus e exponential y plus e to the power x equals 3. So this is the particular solution of the initial value problem. Let me just, let me just make it into, into TPS. So this one is called the particular solution well what we have here is called that is this is called the general the general solution